الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد Today إن شاء الله تعالى I'm going to be speaking about uh, a topic called الرحلة إلى دار الآخرة The journey to the hereafter This is a journey that every single one of us is going to go through Whether you be righteous Whether you be a transgressor, a criminal, wrongdoer Doesn't matter Everyone's going to go through this journey Naam, yes The people are different in their journey One group of people Their journey is going to be bliss and blessings And another group of people Their journey is going to be pain and suffering and agony and all of this is based upon their action. The way that I structured my lecture is, today I'm going to speak about Daru Dunya. Because the slave goes through three stages. Three different places of residency. The first one is Daru Dunya, this world. And then the second one is Darul Barzakh. Barzakh means what? It is a station between the dunya and the hereafter. Darul Barzakh, which is the grave and that which relates to it. And the third stage is going to be Darul Akhirah, the day of judgment. Today I'm going to speak about the first part, which is Darul Dunya. I'm going to speak about this world. And inshallah ta'ala, in another lecture, I will speak about the grave. And in the third lecture, inshallah ta'ala, I will speak about the resurrection and the day of judgment and that which takes place over there. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, Allah put down this world. And Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, He raised the akhirah. Allah says in the Quran, مَنْ كَانَ يُرِيدُ الْعَاجِلَةَ تَعَجَّلْنَا لَهُ فِيهَا مَا نَشَاءُ لِمَنْ نُرِيدُ ثُمَّ جَعَلْنَا لَهُ جَهَنَّمَ يَصْلَاهَا مَدْمُومًا مَدْحُورًا وَمَنْ أَرَادَ الْآخِرَةَ وَسَعَى لَهَا سَعْيَهَا وَهُوَ مُؤْمِنْ فَأُولَئِكَ كَانَ سَعْيُهُمْ مَشْكُورًا كُلًّا نُمِدُّ هَؤُلَاءِ وَهَؤُلَاءِ مِنْ عَطَاءِ رَبِّكَ وَمَا كَانَ عَطَاءُ رَبِّكَ مَحْظُورًا انظُرْ كَيْفَ فَضَّلْنَا بَعْضَهُمْ عَلَى بَعْضٍ وَلَلْآخِرَةُ أَكْبَرُ دَرَجَاتٍ وَأَكْبَرُ تَفْضِيلًا In this ayah, Allah tabarak wa ta'ala referred to the dunya as ajila, Something that's hasty. Something that will go by fast. Something that will not remain for long. That's why Allah says, مَنْ كَانَ يُرِيدُ الْعَاجِلَةِ Anyone who wants this world that's hasty, that is fast, Allah will only give to you that which He wants to give to you. And in that same place, Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, He says, وَلَلْآخِرَةُ أَكْبَرُ دَرَجَاتٍ وَأَكْبَرُ تَفْضِيلًا That the Akhirah is greater and better. In another ayah, Allah says, بَلْ تُؤْثِرُونَ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةُ خَيْرٌ وَأَبْقَى Allah says, you give precedence to this world as though this is all, as, this is, as though this is what you were created for. بَلْ تُؤْثِرُونَ تُؤْثِرُونَ means you're giving precedence. بَلْ تُؤْثِرُونَ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا You're giving precedence to this world. وَالْآخِرَةُ And the hereafter, خَيْرٌ وَأَبْقَى It's better and it's remaining. In the other ayah in Surah Al-Isra, what did he say? مَنْ كَانَ يُرِيدُ العاجلة. He referred to this dunya as something hasting that was going fast. And how did he refer to the akhirah? Allah referred to the akhirah as what? Something that's going to remain and something that's going to be. The Prophet told us in a hadith, 
أعمار أمتي ما بين السبعين ما بين الستين وسبعين وقليل من يجوز ذلك. The messenger said, the span of my ummah, the lifespan of each and every one of us, is between sixty to seventy. وقليل من يجوز ذلك. A little go over seventy. So you're not going to live for long. If you look at the overwhelming majority of people, they live between 60 to 70. Little go over 70. Little go over 70. And it's sad that you as a Muslim will disobey Allah, go against His command for a life that's short, that long. And then you're going to endure and suffer a great and long lengthy punishment on the other side, more than your lifespan. Then you're not a wise person, are you? Allah Taala referred to this dunya as though it's a joy. It's nothing serious. Allah says, "وَمَا هَذِهِ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا لَهُ وَلَعِبٌ وَإِنَّ الدَّارَ الْآخِرَةَ لَهِيَ الْحَيَوَانُ." Allah Subhanahu wa Taala He says, "وَمَا هَذِهِ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا This world, all it is is لَهُ وَلَعِبٌ. It's amazement, joy. That's all it is. وَإِنَّ الدَّارَ الْآخِرَةَ As for the hereafter, لَهِيَ الْحَيَوَانُ what does it mean, Lahi al-Hayawan? Ibn Kathir, rahimahullah, he said, the word Lahi al-Hayawan means al-Hayatu da'ima. The hereafter is the eternal life. Al-Haqq, it's the true life. Al-Ladhi la zawala laha wa l-anqida. There's no ending. Akhirah doesn't have an end. And it doesn't have a time where it stops. Bal hiya mustamirratun abad al-abad. And it will carry on forever. It will, that's it. When you die and you depart from this world, that's it. The journey that has started for you is going to carry on. So you need to think and you have to ponder this world that you're living in today. That something that's that short, is it worth me disobeying Allah in it? Going against His command, subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلِذَلِكَ Those verses that I mentioned and those ayat, it really impacted the life of the Prophet wasallam. And he wasn't one who said to the companions, the world is nothing and didn't live by it. Nor did he wasallam, nurture his companions in loving this dunya and making this dunya the ultimate goal. The Prophet wasallam, the day of Khandaq, the trench, the Prophet ﷺ was with his companions working. And in the hadith Anas ibn Malik, which is in Sahihain, the messenger was saying with his companions, Allahumma la aisha illa aishu al-akhirah, faghfir lil-ansari wal-muhajirah. Allahumma, oh Allah, Allahumma la aisha, there's no life illa aishu al-akhirah, except the life of the hereafter. There's no real life. This is not life. This is nothing. Allahumma, oh Allah, Allahumma la aisha, oh Allah, there is no life illa aishu al-akhirah except the life of the hereafter. Faghfir, oh Allah, forgive the muhajireen and the ansar. The companions, radiallahu ta'ala anhum, they were singing or they were chanting that with the messenger. They were saying it with him. Allahumma la aisha illa aishu al-akhirah. Faghfir lil ansari wal muhajirah. They were saying it with him. And they were not just saying it, brothers, from the tip of their tongue. And they were not merely just saying it. But that really was what they believed. That this world, la aisha, is not a life. Because what is it? As Allah says, وَمَا هَذِي الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا لَهْوٌ وَلَعِبْ It's just a period of amazement. A time of playing. And the real life is the hereafter. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us in the hadith, Al-Imam uh, Bukhari and Muslim both narrated in hadith Anasin. That the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, يَتَّبِعُ الْمَيِّتَ ثَلَاثَ The dead, when he dies, three are going to go with him. فَيَرْجِعُ اثْنَانْ Two are going to come back, وَيَبْقَى وَاحِدْ And one is going to remain. When you die and you leave this world, three things are going to go with you. Two of them are going to come back from the burial. And one is going to remain with you in your grave. What are the two that are going to come back? فَيَرْجِعُ أَهْلُهُ وَمَالُهُ Your family will look at you and they will leave you in that dark pit. 
They will place the sand over you and they will walk away from you. The most beloved people to you are willing to put you in that place. You are now in a world other than the world you used to be in. You're not with the loved ones. Your family are going to go home and they're going to divide the wealth that you left behind. The wealth that you exerted all that effort in. They are now thinking of how is it inherited. Even before you were placed in the grave, you lost your name. You were not referred to by your name. When they were washing your body, they were saying, lift the dead body. Turn over the dead body. You've lost even your name. Now you are in your grave. This is a whole different place. Your family are going to leave you. Your wife is waiting for that period of time, that idda to finish. And as soon as that idda finishes, she is now out looking to get married. Your children are going to look at another man as their stepfather. Life will move on. The world will not stop for you. You're the only one who thinks that you matter. For the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, فَيَرْجِعُ أَهْلُهُ وَمَالُهُ Your family and your wealth are going to come back. What is it that's going to remain? وَيَبْقَى عَمَلُهُ Your actions is what's going to remain. Your actions are what, my beloved brothers and sisters? It is the commandments of Allah, what you did. And the prohibitions that you stayed away from, that's the thing that's going to stay with you in that grave. That's what's going to remain with you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the ayah, كُلُّ نَفْسٍ ذَائِقَةُ الْمَوْتِ وَإِنَّمَا تُوَفَّوْنَ أُجُورَكُمْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ فَمَنْ زُحْزِحَ عَنِ النَّارِ وَأُدْخِلَ الْجَنَّةَ فَقَدْ فَازِ وَمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا مَتَعُ الْغُرُورِ Everyone's going to die, everyone's going to sip that cup of death. Just because a person died 10 years before you, doesn't mean you're not going to die. It's a matter of days and years before it becomes your time. But look at what Allah says. What is it that's going to be taken for you? Everybody will taste death. And then Allah Taala He says, your ujur, your righteous deeds, is what Allah is going to hold for you. Not your family, not your children, your deeds, it's what's going to be held for you. That's what's going to save you in that grave. That's what's going to allow you to pass the test when these angels come and they ask you questions. It's your actions. وَلِذَلِكَ the Sahabas, the Tabi'een and the Tabi'u Tabi'een and the Salihin, the righteous people, they understood that this world was nothing. And they understood that the reality is on the other side. So what did they do? They used to pray at night. Allah says about them, أَمَّنْ هُوَ قَانِتٌ آنَاءَ اللَّيْلِ سَاجِدًا وَقَائِمًا يَحْذَرُ الْآخِرَةِ وَيَرْجُ رَحْمَةَ رَبِّهِ قُلْ هَلْ يَسْتَوِي الَّذِينَ يَعْلَمُونَ وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ إِنَّمَا يَتَذَكَّرَ أُولُو الْأَلْبَابِ Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, He says, أَمَّنْ هُوَ قَانِتٌ The one who stands at night, what is he doing? He's in a state of sujood and ruku' praying. وَيَحْذَرُ الْآخِرَةِ And he's cautious about the matters of the hereafter. He's diligent. Look at him. He's looking at not this dunya. At night he stood up because of the hereafter. Because of what it has on his heart. Allah says about them, تَتَجَافَى جُنُوبُهُمْ عَنِ الْمَضَاجِعِ يَدْعُونَ رَبَّهُمْ خَوْفًا وَطَمَعًا وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ They lie down in bed and they get off it straight away. Because they can't sleep. Why can't they sleep? Because their heart is between fear and hope. They're scared of the punishment that could come their way. And they are hopeful of the reward and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because some of them, they were scared that they will come the day of judgment. And they will meet Allah. And they would meet Him with things that they didn't assume that would come their way. As Allah said in the ayah, وَبَدَا لَهُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ مَا لَمْ يَكُونُوا يَحْتَسِبُونَ That they came the day of judgment, and they saw that which they didn't think was going to happen. They failed. That's what they were scared of. The ayah, that's what it says. وَبَدَا لَهُمْ It became apparent to them and clear to them that which they didn't assume was going to come their way. So that's the reality of this world. The world that people are fighting over. That family members have cut ties and kinship. Two Muslims are not talking to each other. This is the reality of what this world is. لَا قِيمَةَ لَهُ My beloved brothers and sisters, as I said to you, 
every single one of us is going to taste death. And everyone's going to leave this dunya. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says, Kulu nafsin mawt. Every soul will taste death. Whether you like it or whether you don't. Whether you agree or if you don't. It doesn't matter. No one cares. You will leave this world. Allah says to the Prophet, Muhammad, we have not made a person remain in this world forever. We haven't. If you die, Muhammad, do you think that they will live? Of course, if you die, the best man who walked on this earth, so are they going to all die? Every one of us is going to die. Allah says in another ayah, كُلُّ مَنْ عَلَيْهَا فَانْ وَيَبْقَى وَجْهُ رَبِّكَ ذُو الْجَلَالِ وَالْإِكْرَامِ كُلُّ مَنْ عَلَيْهَا فَانْ Every single thing and every single one will perish. Everyone will go. And who's going to remain? Only Allah. That's the day when Allah says, يَوْمَ هُمْ بَارِزُونَ لَا يَخْفَى عَلَى اللَّهِ مِنْهُمْ شَيْءٍ لِمَنِ الْمُلْكُ الْيَوْمِ لِلَّهِ الْوَاحِدِ الْقَحَارِ Allah ta'ala, everybody's in their grave, everyone is dead. Allah asks a question. He says, Liman il mulkul yom. Who is the true king today? There's no one to respond. Everyone's dead. And Allah responds to himself. He says, Lillahi al wahid al qahar. The supreme lord, the powerful one that everybody has come back to. Lillah. To Allah ta'ala, everyone returns. ولذلك the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم the Hadith الإمام البخاري narrated in his Sahih من حديث عبادة بن صامت رضي الله تعالى عنه the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم he said من أحب لقاء الله anyone who loves to meet Allah anyone who wants to meet Allah أحب الله لقاءه الله wants to meet you ومن كره لقاء الله anyone who does not want to meet Allah كره الله لقاءه الله does not want to meet you سبحانه وتعالى Aisha radiyallahu ta'ala anha The narration says Qalat Aisha to awba'adu azwajihi Either Aisha or some of the Prophet's wife Whichever of it it was They said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Inna la nakrahu al We all dislike death We all don't like to die We love to live Inna la nakrahu al We all love to live So how does this Because she understood from the hadith that anybody who doesn't want to die and does not want to meet Allah by wanting to die, then Allah wa Taala doesn't want to meet them. And anyone who loves to die to meet Allah, then Allah wa Taala wants to meet them. That's what she understood from the hadith. Then the messenger corrected her. He said, "Laysa dalika. It is not that Aisha. Walakin al mu'mina, but rather the believer. Ida hadar al maut when death comes to him, bushira bi ridwanillahi." The believer is given glad tidings. When the angel of death comes to him, the believer is given glad tidings. That's what Allah says to him. Those who were steadfast, who said Allah is our Lord, and they didn't just say that, but they were steadfast on that statement. They lived by that statement. They said, Allah is our Lord. Allah is my Lord. And they lived by that statement. How did they live by it? They made Allah their reference point. They did what He told them to do, and they stayed away from that which He told them to stay away from. And they were steadfast. What happens? The angels would descend on them. What will the angels say to them? Two things. Don't be scared. And don't have in your heart any distress. What do they both mean? means don't be scared of these angels that you're seeing. They're not going to harm you. You're a righteous person. Don't be scared of these creation that you're coming into contact with, which you've never seen before. Don't worry. They are not here to harm you. They are here to aid you. Don't be distressed. For the family members you've left behind, your children, your offspring, your wives, your kids, don't worry for them. We're going to take care of them for you. You're a righteous man or you're a righteous woman. Don't worry about your children you've left behind. We're going to take care of them. Mujahid ibn Jabrin said that on the ayah. Ibn Jarir al-Tabari brings it in his tafsir. 
So this is what the hadith means. If death comes to the believer, the righteous person, Bushira bi ridwanillah, and he's given the glad tidings of Allah being pleased with him, what would he want? As soon as he's given that glad tidings, what is he going to want? He's going to, he's going to want فَلَيْسَ شَيْءٌ The Prophet says, أَحَبَّ إِلَيْهِ مِمَّا أَمَامَهُ There's nothing more beloved to that person except that which is in front of him. Meaning he wants to go forward and meet Allah Taala, Because he knows the path that's awaiting him. فَأَحَبَّ اللَّهُ لِقَاءَهُ Allah then wants to meet you subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَإِنَّ الْكَافِرَ The disbeliever. إِذَا حُضِرَ If he's given glad tidings, بُشِّرَ بِعَذَابِ اللَّهِ He's given the glad tidings of the punishment of Allah. وَعُقُوبَتِي And that Allah is going to his wrath is upon him. As soon as he's told that, فَلَيْسَ شَيْءٌ أَكْرَحْ There's nothing more disliked to that disbeliever that day مِمَّا أَمَامَهُ than that which is in front of him. He doesn't want to meet Allah. He doesn't want to كريها لقاء الله. He dislikes the meeting of Allah. وكره الله لقاءه. Allah does not want to meet him. The, the righteous people, my beloved brothers and sisters, they want to meet Allah. They are pleased with meeting Allah wa Taala because they stacked righteous deeds. They invested in their hereafter. Do you not remember the story of Sahibu Yasin? The, the story of the Yasin that Allah mentioned. What did the man say to the people? He says, Inni amantu bi rabbikum fasma'un. I believed in your Lord. Listen to what I have to tell you. What did Allah tell us that he was said to him? Qila dukhulil jannah. قَالَ يَا لَيْتَ قَوْمِ يَعْلَمُونَ بِمَا غَفَرَ لِرَبِّ وَجْعَلَنِي مِنَ الْمُكْرَمِينَ أُدْخُلُ الْجَنَّةِ Enter Jannah. Why? Because he said, I believe in Allah. Come people, believe in Allah with me. And so when he died, Allah says to him, and the angels say to him, go and enter Jannah. And then what does he say? يَا لَيْتَ قَوْمِ يَعْلَمُونَ I wish my people knew what I received. I wish my people knew what I gained from my statement of saying, I believe in Allah. وَجَعَلَنِي مِنَ الْمُكْرَمِينَ And Allah has made me from those who He has honored. Allah has honored me now by taking me to Jannah. That's the believer. Who, what did he do? He followed what Allah told him to do, and he stayed away from that which Allah told him to stay away from. My beloved brothers and sisters, our life, and when it's going to end, it's not in our hands. It's all documented. And it's in the hands of Allah wa Taala. No one knows except Him. Allah says in the Quran, "وَمَا كَانَ لِنَفْسٍ أَن تَمُوتَ إِلَّا بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ كِتَابًا مُؤَجَّلًا وَمَن يُرِدْ ثَوَابَ الدُّنْيَا نُؤْتِهِ مِنْهَا وَمَن يُرِدْ ثَوَابَ الْآخِرَةِ نُؤْتِهِ مِنْهَا وَسَنَجْزِ الشَّاكِرِينَ." Allah says, "وَمَا كَانَ لِنَفْسٍ." There is not a soul except he will die with the permission of Allah, based on a documented and a recorded time. We don't know when we're going to die. We have no knowledge of that. It's from the things Allah has hidden. And no one knows except Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. قُلْ لَا يَعْلَمُ مَنْ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ الْغَيْبَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَمَا يَشْعُرُونَ أَيَّانَ يُبْعَثُونَ قُلْ لَا يَعْلَمُ مَنْ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ No one knows what's in the samawat and that which is in the ard. And no one knows the unseen إِلَّا اللَّهِ except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. عَالِمُ الْغَيْبِ فَلَا يُظْهِرُ عَلَىٰ غَيْبِهِ أَحَدًا This is from the unseen, only Allah knows. We don't know that. So since we don't know when we're going to die, and since we, know, we don't know when it's going to be our ending point, our, last, um, our life should every day be based upon our last moment. Some, some of the salihin, some of the righteous people, they used to say, some of the righteous people, they used to say, if the angel of death came to us, and the angel of death was to say to us, I am going to take your soul now, or I'm going to take your soul tomorrow, this time, prepare for it. Some of the righteous people, they said, we wouldn't know anything that we could add on to the actions that we already do. We don't know what more we could do. Every single day of their life was as though it's their last. It was narrated from one of the righteous salihin that they came to a place to pray salah. And they told one of the men, go in and lead. And he said, no, I don't want to lead. And the other one said, no, lead. And he said, no, I don't want to lead. 
And then he said, okay, I will lead, but tomorrow I will not lead. And don't ask me tomorrow to lead. And they said, go back. Go back in the line. Don't lead us to salah. Because you're thinking that you're going to live for tomorrow. We pray this salah as though it's our last. We're going to go into this salah with the mindset that it's going to be our last. To think that you're going to be tomorrow and the day after. We don't think that far, they said. And that's on the basis of what? Of their deen. The dunya, na'am, you live as though when you're working for the dunya, you work openly. But your religion and your deen, you act and you pray your salah as though this is your last salah. You have no other chance to pray again. Allah Taala told us, "Qul yatawafakum malaku al-maut al-ladhi wukila bikum, thumma ila rabbikum turja'oon." The angels, that's their responsibility. They are the ones that are going to come and they're going to take that nafs from you. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala described for us that last moment of when the person is leaving this world, the sakarat, and the departuring of this world. Allah told us that people are two types. Allah says in the ayah, وَمَنْ أَظْلَمُ مِمَّنْ افْتَرَى عَلَى اللَّهِ الْكَذِبَ وَمَنْ أَظْلَمُ مِمَّنْ افْتَرَى عَلَى اللَّهِ الْكَذِبَ أَوْ قَالَ أُوحِيَ إِلَيَّ وَلَمْ يُوحَى إِلَيْهِ شَيْءٌ وَمَنْ قَالَ سَأُنْزِلُ مِثْلَ مَا أَنْزَلَ اللَّهِ وَلَوْ تَرَى إِذِ الظَّالِمُونَ فِي غَمَرَاتِ الْمَوْتِ وَالْمَلَائِكَةُ بَاسِطُ أَيْدِيهِمْ أَخْرِجُوا أَنفُسَكُمُ الْيَوْمَ تُجْزَوْنَ عَذَابَ الْهُونِ بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَقُولُونَ عَلَى اللَّهِ غَيْرَ الْحَقِّ وَكُنْتُمْ عَنْ آيَاتِهِ تَسْتَكْبِرُونَ Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, he tells us here, وَلَوْ تَرَى إِذِ الظَّالِمُونَ فِي غَمَرَاتِ الْمَوْتِ If only you saw the transgressors and the criminals and the wrongdoers فِي غَمَرَاتِ الْمَوْتِ When they are in the agony of death, when they are leaving this world the way that they are, if only you saw it, وَالْمَلَائِكَةُ بَاسِطُ أَيْدِيهِمْ And the angels have spread their wings inside them. أَخْرِجُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ And they are being said to bring out your own nafs. الْيَوْمَ تُجْزَوْنَ عَذَابَ الْهُونِ And they are suffering with the nafs. It's not taken out and it's not in. And they are suffering. الْيَوْمَ تُجْزَوْنَ عَذَابَ الْهُونِ Today you're going to suffer a great suffering. Why? الْيَوْمَ تُجْزَوْنَ عَذَابَ الْهُونِ بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَقُولُونَ عَلَى اللَّهِ غَيْرَ الْحَقِّ because you used to say about Allah that which wasn't true. وَكُنْتُمْ عَنْ آيَاتِهِ تَسْتَكْبِرُونَ And when the verses of Allah were told to you, and you were told to fear Allah and to rectify your situation, you became arrogant, stubborn, hard-headed. When a person said to you, اِتَّقِ الله, Fear Allah. Instead of saying, جَزَاكَ اللَّهُ خَيْرًا You became from those who Allah says, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يُعْجِبُكَ قَوْلُهُ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَيُشْهِدُ اللَّهَ وَيُشْهِدُ اللَّهَ عَلَى مَا فِي قَلْبِهِ وَهُوْ أَلَدُّ الْخِصَامِ وَإِذَا تَوَلَّى سَعَى فِي الْأَرْضِ لِيُسْيِدَ فِيهَا وَيُهْلِكَ الْحَرْثَ وَالنَّسْ وَاللَّهُ لَا يُحِبُّ الْفَسَادِ وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُ اتَّقِ اللَّهِ أَخَذَتُ الْعِزَّةُ بِالْإِثْمِ فَحَسْبُهُ جَهَنَّمُ وَلَبِئْسَ الْمِهَادِ That when he is told fear Allah أَخَذَتُ الْعِزَّةُ بِالْإِثْمِ arrogance and stubbornness and hard headed takes him well اتَّقِ اللَّهِ is a good thing anyone who reminds you of Allah it should be something that moves you so why are these people being punished? They became arrogant, stubborn, hard-headed and went against Allah Ta'ala's commands. Like in the righteous people, the believers who believed in Allah, who stood by their religion, qalban in their hearts, waqaliban externally and internally, this deen was truthful about it. They were not lying about it. Allah says about them, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَ اللَّهِ ثُمَّ اسْتَقَامُوا تَتَنَزَّلُ عَلَيْهِمُ الْمَلَائِكَةَ أَلَّا تَخَافُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا وَأَبْشِرُوا بِالْجَنَّةِ الَّتِي كُنْتُمْ تُوَعَدُونَ For them, it's not like, وَلَوْ تَرَى إِذِ الْمُجْرِمُونَ These ones, it's going to be said to them, don't be scared. Don't be scared, about, don't, don't be scared of these angels that you're seeing. Yes, they don't look like what you used to see, but they're here to serve you. They're here to take care of you. And don't be worried for your families that you've left before, behind. It, they're going to be taken care of. Allah is going to take care of your family for you. He's given tranquility and tuma'nina. Just, inshallah ta'ala, be calm. Those two people, ask yourself, brothers and sisters, those two people are from the creation of Allah. And they are from the children of Adam. Why has one become... Punishment and destruction and torment is what's being done to him. And the other one is what? Good. All based on what? Lineage? Where they're from? No. The reality is their actions. What they did is different. 
these ones were steadfast. Their characteristics was that they lived by their religion. And the other party were criminals. Inshallah ta'ala, I will stop there bi idhnillahi al-kareem. Anything which I have said that was wrong or incorrect is from me and shaitan and Allah and his messenger are free from it. Subhanak Allahumma bihamdik ashadu wa la ilaha illallah astaghfiruk wa atubu ilayh. I'll take questions inshallah ta'ala if you have any questions. Um, remember the rakin that this was only the daru dunya. So we'll do the next station, which is Barzak. We're, t- we're trying to take short and straight from the Quran and the Sunnah, inshallah ta'ala. And then we'll take the Barzakh, the grave, and then we'll take, inshallah ta'ala, the Akhirah. And the believer, he goes through those stages. Okay, any questions? Fadbal. Can a person be in this world? Can the barzakh be open to him? This is a mas'ala that the scholars discussed deeply. One of the people who pushed this, that it could happen, it's a possibility, and he brought some aqwal for it, is Al-Imam ibn al-Qayyim in his kitab, in his kitab Al-Ruh. Are we all together? Like in the Jumhur al-Ulama, they believe that when it comes to what's happening in the grave, the only people who are being open for them is Nabiullah Muhammad and the animals. Huh? The Prophet ﷺ one day was on his riding beast. Fahad that it, the riding beast that the Prophet was on, it went fast. Fakad at Tulqi, he was about to throw the Prophet off. And then the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Faida huwa bayna. Khamsin or Sitin Akburin, he was next to five or six graves. And then the Prophet ﷺ, he said, Man li ha, man, man li ha Who are the people of this grave? And they said, Ya Rasulullah, they are people who died upon disbelief. And then the Messenger وسلم, he said in the hadith, alayhi salatu was salam, um, alla tadafanu. If it wasn't for you not to. If, if it wasn't for you not to bury your deads, لَسَأَلْتُ اللَّهَ أَنْ يُسْمِعَكُمْ عَذَابَ الْقَبْرِ I would have asked Allah to allow you all to hear the punishment of the grave. But because the people won't bury their deads anymore, they'll throw them away. If they see عَذَابَ الْقَبْرِ How would you bring the body to the grave? Because you hear so much noise. So the animal that the Prophet was on, the Prophet ﷺ said, the Baha'im, the animals, they hear Adab al Qabr. Lakin, we don't hear it. Because if we did hear it, we would have thrown our family members off cliffs or we would have thrown them onto trees and, because we don't want to put them in a grave. Sister asked a question. She said, Please guide us to how to increase our iman. The way to increase your iman, number one, is to read the Quran. You, you see the verses that we read today? Those are ayat from the Quran. Trying to understand those verses. If you connect yourself to the Quran, it will increase your iman. Allah says about the believers, in الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِرَ اللَّهُ وَجِلَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ وَإِذَا تُلِيَتْ عَلِيهِمْ آيَاتُ زَادَتْهُمْ إِيمَانًا وَعَلَى رَبِّهِمْ وَعَلَى رَبِّهِمْ يَتَوَكَّلُونَ That the believers are those who what? When they recite the Quran, what does it do for them? It increases their iman. Number two, the thing that increases your iman is الصُحْبَةُ الصَّالِحَةُ Righteous friends. If you are with righteous people, by being with them, automatically your iman increases. They will take you from one station to another to another. They change your whole perspective. Walidarika, the Prophet of Allah was told to be with righteous people. Allah said to the Prophet, Wasbir nafsakam alladina yad'una rabbahum bil ghadati wal ashi yuriduna wajha wa la ta'adu aynaka anhum turidu zinat al hayati dunya wa la tuti' man aghfalna qalbahu an dhikrina wa taba hawa wa kana amruhu furuta. Walidarika, the bad friend, he will have effect on you. That the day of judgment you will re- regret. That the person will say, Does anyone know the ayah that the person will regret the bad friend that they were in? Allah says, Allah says, The bad friend, he will harm you. He will put you through a lot of 
iman decrease by being with good people as the prophet said in the hadith of abi musa al-ash'ari مثل الجليس الصالح والجليس السوء كحامل مسك ونافع الخير that the righteous friend uh, is like and the bad friend is the example of a what? a perfume shop if you go to a perfume shop what happens? you're in a nice environment it's nice to be in there just sit, relax you're smelling something nice correct? being with the righteous person all that's coming out from them is khair and wisdom and benefits if you're in the perfume shop, what happens? There's a chance that a perfume might pour over you and that's good for your clothing. Or he might give you a swipe of... Your, being with the per, perfume owner is of good. What about if you go to a blacksmith? Your clothes will burn. If it doesn't burn, you're in a place where it's not good for your lungs. Not only that, it sticks to your clothes and it harms the smell and the odor of your clothes. The bad friend is like that. The bad friend, brothers, if you know or not, he will actually affect even the way you move. That's the reality. People think that a person can only affect you when they verbally speak. That's not the truth. Some people, they affect you even if they're not saying anything. Just by what? Just by the way they... Because we humans, what do we do? We copy each other. By default, we copy each other. So the righteous person is the one you want to be with. That person will increase your iman. Also, one of the things that increases Iman is reading the life of the noble people. Reading Kutubul Alam, it increases your Iman. You'll be amazed with these people, how they did it, their lives, their biography. You see, the poet he said, "Ida maridna tadawina bi dhikrukumu wa natruku dhikra ahyanan fanantakisu." When our hearts become sick and we slightly feel like we're lazy and we're not as we should be, what do we do? Tadawina bi dhikrukumu. We cure our hearts with your remembrance, O scholars, with your biographies, O scholars. And sometimes we leave off your remembrance and the studying of their biography. We go back on our hills. Are you with me, brothers? One of the examples is one of the great scholars of our close time was Sheikh Muhammad Nasir al-Din al-Albani, who recently died, not many years ago back. It's amazing that when he was on his deathbed, one of the conditions or one of the things that he wrote in his will is that he's hastened to his grave. He said, when I die, I want my burial to be fast. I want to be taken to my grave quickly. Are you with me, brothers? I don't want... He said, even if my children or my sons are away, then I don't, don't wait for him to come and then bury me. As soon as I die, try to take me as soon as possible to my grave. Shaykh Muhammad ibn Salih ibn Uthaymeen was told about what Shaykh Al-Bani said. Ibn Uthaymeen was told. And Shaykh ibn Uthaymeen said, Al-Bani implemented the Sunnah when he was alive and now that he's dead, he wants the Sunnah still to be followed. You see, when you read these people's biography, who would want to be hastened to their grave unless they believe what? Something to hasten for, sah? Who believes they've been working hard. So when you read these people's lives and their biographies, you realize it's shocking how they were. Sheikh Ali Imam Muhammad rahimahullah said, There's not a hadith I heard from the Prophet ﷺ except I implemented, even if it's once, I implemented it in my life. Are you with me, brothers? Except one hadith, and he said, I'm going to implement that now, which is that the Prophet ﷺ, remember when he done hijama and he gave the man who did the hijama for him one dirham? Ali Imam Muhammad said, I done, I'm going to do hijama now and I'm going to give the guy who did hijama for me one dirham. I'm going to follow the sunnah. So when you read these people's lives, trust me, it will increase your iman. And you would want to be like that. Ata ibn Abi Rabah, he said, I never spoke, I never uttered something, unless I asked myself 70 times, is this for me or against me? He said, because Allah said in the Quran, مَا يَلْفِضُ مِنْ قَوْلٍ إِلَّا لَدَيْهِ رَقِيمٌ عَتِيدٌ وَلَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ وَنَعْلَمُ مَا تُوَسْوِسُ بِهِ نَفْسُهُ وَنَحْنُ أَقْرَبُ إِلَيْهِ مِنْ حَبْلِ الْوَرِيدِ إِذْ يَتَلَقَّى الْمُتَلَقِّيَانِ عَنِ الْيَمِينِ وَعَنِ الشِّمَالِ قَعِيدٌ مَا يَلْفِضُ مِنْ قَوْلٍ إِلَّا لَدَيْهِ رَقِيمٌ عَتِيدٌ Because he said angels are writing what I say. So I asked myself 70 times is this for me against me? No. How is it for me? Unless I knew it was for me I wouldn't say it. Are you with me brothers? So when you read these people's lives like that and how they were then you realize this is what you want to be. 
Because remember, we want Jannah. We want Jannah. Isn't that the case? <laughs> Those are the people who want Jannah. Do you what? Do we have a, a place in Jannah? Yeah. Do we have a place in Jannah based on our actions? Huh? Based on our actions. If you look at what you do and what they were doing, I think I mentioned it recently that some of the Salihin they used to pray Qiyamul Layl and their legs would become so weak. Their legs become tired, they can't carry their legs. They have a stick next to them, they take the stick, they beat their leg. And they say to their le- themselves, Qum, stand. Do you want to compete with Muhammad and his companions in Jannah and you, you're tired? He's saying that to what? He's saying that to his legs and his body. You see, when I looked at the lives of the companions, you realize that the Prophet ﷺ had to tell the companions to be easy on themselves. That's what you find a lot of places. Remember when the three men, they came to the Prophet's house and one said, I'm not going to fast. I'm not going to break my fast. I'm going to be fasting for the rest of my life. And the other one said, I'm never going to marry. And the other one said, what? And I'm going to pray all night. Look what the Prophet had to say to them. Are you with me, brothers? His wife, he came to the masjid. He saw a rope. That was connected to two pillars. This is his wife. So he said, Whose rope is this? And they said to him, Oh, this is Zainab's rope. And they said, Hulu, take it down. Or he said, What should you do with it? They said, She prays, she prays, she prays, she prays. When her legs cannot carry her anymore, she, tie, she holds onto the rope and she dangles off it and she still carries on praying like that. Then he said, Take it off, take it down. You see, you find that common in the companions. Abdullah ibn Amr ibn Aas, he used to pray all day. And all night, he, sorry, he would fast all day and he would pray all night. And his father complained about him, Amr ibn As. He said to him, oh, Messenger of Allah, my son Abdullahi, I married him off to one of the best women of Quraysh. All day he's fasting, so that means he can't come into contact with his wife. And all night he's praying. So he's giving her no rights. So you, you see this common in the companions. One of the benefits I read was that because of that, Allah told these companions, He said, Wala tansa nasibaka min dunya. Don't forget your dunya. They were, they were told, just don't forget your dunya. Our ones is don't forget the akhirah. Sahih? It's the opposite. They were focused on the akhirah. They were dedicated in the akhirah. They believed in the akhirah. To the extent, Ukashat ibn Muhsin, he was in the middle of the battle. His sword broke. Push. He's got no sword. He looks at the Prophet, he said, Ya Rasul, I don't have a sword. The Prophet breaks a branch. He gives him the branch, he takes off the twigs and he says, fight with this. Allah, he doesn't look at the Prophet and say, come on Ya Rasulullah, fight with the branch. Allah, he doesn't ask the Prophet that question. He goes directly into the battlefield and he fights. No question, no ifs, no buts, no what, how. They believe him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Everything he says, they believe it. Are you me, brothers? That's the people that when you read their biographies, you're like, wow. Your iman will automatically grow. You won't dare to question Allah wa Taala's commandments. You will not question Allah's rules and regulations, because they didn't. Abu Bakr radiAllahu anhu, when Quraysh came to him and he said, "Ya, Muh- ya Abu Bakr, Abu Bakr, do you think?" They said, "Did you hear what your friend said?" Referring to the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. He said, "What did he say?" They said he claimed that he was taken from Mecca. And then he was, uh, sorry, Medina. And then he was taken to what? Baytul Maqdis. And then from Baytul Maqdis, he was taken high up. And then all of this happened. And then he came back all in one night. <laughs> and they laughed. This is what your friend's saying. Do you believe him? Wallahi, Abu Bakr did not hesitate. He said, Bala. And he didn't even say, Naam. You know, Naam means yes. Bala means of course. Of course I believe him. I believe something bigger than all of that. Which is what? He said to me, revelation comes to me day and night and I believe that from him. And that title gave Abu Bakr what? Siddiq. So you read these people's biography. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. You read the life of Sa'ad ibn Mu'ad. Sit down and read these people's biography. Your iman will grow. Your iman will grow. And you realize what they're like. Umar radiallahu anhu. He walked out of Medina and Umar had 12 stitches in his garment. 
12 stitches, ripped, he stitched it again, ripped, he stitched it again, ripped, he stitched it again. But his armies reached Mashariq al Ardu wa Magharibiha, the armies of Allah. The leader is so eager to meet Umar. So he comes and Umar is sleeping under a tree. He wakes up, he sees Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. The man says to him, but please, even the companions, they said, we will give you our clothing, dress better. You're representing the army of Islam and the Muslims. And you know what he said? He said, A'azzal Allah bin Islam. Allah ordered us to Islam. فَمَنِي بِتَغَلْ عِزَّةَ فِي غَيْرِهِ إِسْلَامِ أَدَلَّ اللَّهُ And anyone who looks for honor in other than Islam, Allah will honor him. They think Allah will disgrace him. My honor didn't come through my garment. I didn't conquer Mashariq al Ardu wa Magharibiha because of my thought or my garment that I'm wearing. I conquered it because of what I believe of Allah Azza wa Jal. Honor came to me through this, and anyone who looks for honor in other Islam, Allah is going to disgrace it. Allah is going to humiliate him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So read these people's lives. In their life is a what? Ibar. What? Tonight go home and read the story of the noble companion Sa'ad ibn Mu'ad radiallahu ta'ala The man who Allah, when he died, ihtazza lahu ashru rahman Allah's throne moved. Have you ever heard of a companion? The throne of Allah moved when he died? There's a companion. Ihtazza lahu ashru rahman The Prophet told us alayhi salatu wasalam that when this companion died, Allah's throne moved subhanahu wa ta'ala and 70,000 angels came down that never came down. And when he died, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he died, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam stood up with his companions. And he ran. And he said, Ya Rasulullah, ala risk, why are you running for? And he said, Wallahi, I don't want the angels to come and beat us to Sa'ad ibn Mu'ad, his janazah. Just like they beat us to the janazah of Habarat. I don't want it to happen like that. In the life of these people, inshallah, ta'ala, they buy for free. And you see a lot of amazement for life. These people, their lives will change your, your perspective in life and your iman will increase. <coughs> Any other questions? <laughs>